Flavias. I gladly welcome you to this special episode of this unique program. You talk with Mary Ulabi. I pray that the intent for today's message or for today's topic, if I may say, will be fulfilled in your life to God's glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I remain Mary Ulabi. The unique of his kind topic that the Lord have laid in our hearts to briefly discuss with you in today's episode is ever equipped youth readily prepare for war. Ever equipped youth that are readily prepared for war. When we say ever equipped, what do you mean by the word ever? Ever is at any time. Ever equipped youth at any time. At all time, all the time and in every occasion, ever equip you readily prepare for work. That ever is at any time, at all time, such youth is prepared for work. On every occasion, he or she is prepared for work. At all time, equip is provided or fitted out with what is necessary or useful or appropriate. Prepared. Ever equipped you. You are ever prepared. Equipped means provided with whatsoever is necessary for a purpose. Ever provided for whatsoever is necessary for a purpose. That is to be equipped, to be stocked. You are volume, you are full. Ever equipped, you ever stocked, ever prepared, prepared with proper equipment. That is to be, to be equipped, to carry weapon. You are harmed. You are ever harmed. That is, you are ever, e- so ever equipped you is prepared at all time. You are ever prepared at all time. Ever stalled, fully armed at any time. That is to be ever e- prepared, ever equipped. That is, you are ready to carry weapon at all time. And in every occasion, ever ready. You know what the, let's see what the scripture says in Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 4. It said, nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night. Because of them, they ever prayed in Nehemiah chapter 4 and 9. Nehemiah and people walking with him to build the wall of Jerusalem. They, they prayed day and night, ever equipped youth. And ever equipped, that is, they are well guided by the word of truth. Yes, they are well guided by the word of truth. That is the scripture. They constantly and daily strive to read and act the word of their maker. Ever equipped you. No wonder they are ever equipped. Remember, we are talking about ever equipped you that are readily prepared for war. When we say readily, that is without much difficulty, in a punctual manner, promptly, that is readily. Then prepare is to make ready or fit or suitable beforehand. Equip with necessary intellectual resources. That is ever prepared. And when we talk about war, we talk about an active struggle between conflicting entity. You and the devil, you and your success, you, you are fighting with, um, you know, whatsoever issues of life. You can be, you can be struggling with, um, what we like call this addictions. Whatsoever you choose of life that doesn't want you to fulfill God's purpose and plans for your life. That is war. You are warring. A, a war is a considered campaign to end something that is in, in, injurious. That is a war. So when we say you are readily prepared for war, that is you are ever punctual and equipped. You are ever punctual and equipped to contest with the enemy of destiny and purpose. That is to be ever prepared for war. Promptly and suitable fight. The battles of life. That is whoever equips for war. And finally, I want to say, when you check the uh, description in Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 17, Nehemiah 4, 17, say, They which builded on the wall, and they that bear burden, with those that landed, everyone with one of his hand, wrought in the work, and with the other hand, had a weapon. Wow. Readily prepared for war. As they were building with one hand, the other hand was used to handle weapon. Hmm. Youth of substance. Ever prepare for war. 
they were fighting, they needed to build the wall, and with that, the enemy were around them, saying that they cannot achieve purpose of God. The devil is around you saying you can't achieve purpose of God. That is the reason for today's message. Ever prepare you, readily prepare for war. I pray the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. And before we dig deep, I'm sure today will be a one time that you will not forget in your life. Because I believe God, especially with the guests I'm having in the studio today, it's Pastor Lale Kwenwek Beson. It's been a concert resource person we've been using in this program. You know him? Um, Pastor Oleg Beson. It's, it's very familiar. And um, I, I believe we have watched um, this. The last episode we did was um, Be Illuminated. I hope you have watched it. Have you watched Dwelling in His Presence? If you have not watched Be Illuminated and Dwelling in His Presence, you have missed it, I can tell you. Go and watch it. If not, you have missing a lot. And I believe that today too will be a wonderful session in the presence of God. Welcome with me, Pastor Egberson. Pastor Egberson, you are welcome with me today. Thank you, man. I want to appreciate God for your life, especially the last, the last time you were in the studio was awesome to the glory of God. I give God the glory for it. Okay, you spoke man. so much deeply that as I sat down that day, I was like, wow, this is almost getting too much even for me myself. You talked about being illuminated and I, I saw a lot of light in it personally and I know that the youth have gained a lot from it. I pray that the Lord will establish you more in the name of Jesus. I know I've, I've introduced the topic a bit but uh, I know you still have a lot to add to what I've said. We are talking about ever equip youth readily prepare for war. I don't know. What does it mean to be equipped as a youth and prepare for war? Praise God. Um, yeah. It's a good time to be here again. Um, the topic for today is so deep. Mm. Uh, if we speak the whole day, we'll still be on it. Mm. But I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us Amen. to be able to do justice and touch on the key points. Mm. Um, what does it mean as a youth yes. to be equipped yes. and prepared for war? Yes, sir. Um, you know, the book of um, Ecclesiastes 12, 1, mm. you know, talks about Remember the Lord in the days of your youth, mm. when the evil days have not come. Mm. If you look through the scripture, um, everyone that God has used mightily, mm. were used in their youthful age. Mm. Because in youth lies strength. So we're talking about war, we're talking about soldier fighting. There is the time of strength. Because warfare is about power. So, at, at, at what age a baby doesn't fight war? Yeah. And, and old man, the old man too cannot fight. So, there is a gestation period where you are at the peak of your strength. Mm. So, that is one. So, that's why this message is on the youth. Because if you miss it at that point, you can't gain what you miss in the time of your youth. It becomes difficult. Mm. You won't see God calling some... It's very weird. In the old days, that's when God is calling you out to come and work for him. No. Jesus, why, why was Jesus called to, he fulfilled his mission at his youthful age and was done. At it, because that's the time of strength. That's the time of strength. So, um, so what does it mean to be accused and, and be prepared, prepared for war? In, 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 in the book of First Timothy chapter 4, he said, Chapter 4, verse 12. He said, let no one despise their youth. Let no one despise your youth. But be an example unto others, to believers, in speech, in conduct, and in faith, and in purity. Mm. In speech, the way you talk. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that means if you are going to be an example unto others in speech, mm. your heart has to be pure mm. because it is what is within that you speak out. Mm. So it's talking about people who have learned to separate themselves unto who enlist them as soldier. You see, we are talking about soldier. There are different soldiers. Soldiers in every country differ. You can't say because you're a soldier in Nigeria, you're automatically a soldier in the U.S. Mm. In soldier in Nigeria has to follow the rules in, this country. in the country and the, the rules of engagement. Mm. So also, there are two kingdoms here. The kingdom of life and the kingdom of the devil. 
So, because we are going to dig deeper into this whole thing. There is, why war? Why fight now? Are we not peaceful people? The Bible says, we are in the world, but not of the world. So, we are staying in a place that is not us. So, how do we now survive? How do we eat? How do we go to school? How do we do the things that we need to do? How do we world. prosper? When we are not of the world. So, that is what is causing the war. The contention. Yes. Because everything belongs to our, our maker, to our God. But because the world has been corrupted. He said all that is in the world. is not of God, but of the devil. Is the pride of life. It's all that is in this world, though. And this world has been corrupted. It's not the way I created it. That's why, you know, in Revelation, it's going to bring a new head. But before it happens, we're already here. And so, by the redemptive work of Christ, he has re... In fact, we are, you are, he, he seen, I'm sorry. Are you? I'm just trying to lay a foundation. Because there is this question yes. that I have here. Yeah. What, what war are we fighting? Yes. Uh, because I, I'm going to talk about it. I'm trying to lay a foundation so that we understand that why war? And why as the youth? So, you have to first understand that you belong to a kingdom, a different kingdom, a kingdom of light, if you are for Christ. So there is constant war. So you have to operate according to the rules and engagement of the kingdom where you belong, mm. not the kingdom of this world. Mm. So, so you have to. You have to. So as a youth, you have to. And there are rules of engagement of that kingdom you belong to. For you to be engaged for you to, on even, that because it's not everybody that belongs to that is qualified to be soldier. So, so, so those are the things that we need to understand. And then, because you can't fight war unless you are a soldier. So there are those who have remained busy. So those are the things that equipped us to be. So and those are the things that was made clear. He said, "Look, as youth, do not let anyone despise your youth, but be an example unto others of the believer in speech." So. He's saying that they are the people who have been able to tame their tongue. Anyone, the Bible says in James, anyone who can tame his tongue will be able to overcome any sin. So, these people who have grown in the spirit according to the rules of engagement, according to the, 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 the pattern given in that kingdom of light where we belong, mm. to say this is the way to go by understanding how to divide the world. The word of God, mm. you know, and make ourselves approved unto Him, mm. and then we grow to become soldiers. Mm. And then that soldier wow. is in levels, it's you know. Levels. If you look at, we will talk about it. Let me not. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so, what war are we actually fighting? We're talking about war, 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 war. I hope some youth will not be yeah. scared away. <laughs> what war are we actually fighting? Here? We're in a constant war, whether you accept it or not. We're in a constant war. And many believers are already a captive of the war because they do not understand who they are and where they belong. That is the first... You know, ignorance is not an excuse. When war is going on, and you are not conscious that there and is that, war, that, that's why you the Bible the says, my, 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 is there, my, my people, people perish. are perish because they lack knowledge. There is war going on between light and darkness. There is war going on between the kingdom of Zion and the kingdom of the devil. There is war going on every day. Now, the Bible says we are the light of the world. So, that means it's a world of darkness. So, I've made you light. Now, those things the Bible says, everything the Bible says about us, sometimes we wonder, Bible says, I've made you rich. Uh, and you don't see that you are rich. How come? Because we have not learned to um, actualize God's word. Those, that is actually who we are. But we have, there's a way to work it. See, work the good work of faith. We have to work it to bring it to manifestation. So, you see, we have been called as a royal priesthood, a holy nation. This is God called us out of darkness when the world before called out of darkness into light. And that's why there is rivalry, there is battle. We were once in darkness. Everyone was once a sinner. Called out of that darkness. Because we were born in this world. And then the salvation and redemptive work of Christ, you know, found us and called us out of the darkness 
into his light. And then the devil is waging war to do everything to want to bring us back. So that's the war we are fighting. Now, this war is not a physical war. It's a spiritual war. So if it's a spiritual war, how are we expected to fight and win? That because it means that you are not seeing whom you are fighting. Is that not? So, but what about the fighting we see? Maybe you are fighting your friend or your body. <laughs> I don't know because if if you say it's a spirit, then how are we expected to fight such fight? The Bible says we in Ephesians chapter six verse twelve. It said, "We wrestle not against flesh and blood." but against principalities and power, against rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are the levels of darkness we are wrestling with. We are wrestling not against flesh and blood. That is, we are not doing physical fight. When you see your wife manifest in a way mm. that you don't expect, mm. you see your boss just hates you, you see things not going the way you want He's it. saying that, look, you are not of this world. Don't think of the, like the people of this world. You belong to a kingdom where the devil, the, the people of this world are jealous of you. Mm. And so, think spiritual first. Because mm. the spirit controls the physical. Mm. Everything is, con every, everyone, so everyone is representing a spirit. Mm. Everyone you see. As a child of God, or the one who has sold himself to the devil. You are representing the kingdom you belong to. Mm. Now, to what extent you have aligned with the rules of engagement as a soldier mm. in whichever kingdom you tells have. how you have dominion and control. Mm. Now, the kingdom we belong to, we are expected, he said, we are not of this world. He said, we are to dominate this world from Zion. Now, we have been called. I will plead that you allow me, because there are things we need to understand with respect to this question. They are in levels. Um, we are fighting a spiritual battle that has been established. So, but here we are physical. We are talking now, we are expected to fight it. Yes. So, if we are fighting a spiritual battle, then how do we win? That means we have to be spiritual. Wow. So, how do we become spiritual in order to fight the spiritual battles? Battles. Now, the battle starts with us. The battle we are fighting is a battle of the soul. The kingdom of darkness is fighting for our soul. Kali, Kapo, and the kingdom Shaka. of light is fighting for our soul. I hope someone is listening. Now, the Bible <laughs> says all that is in this world, in this world, is the pride of life, lust of the flesh, and the lust of the heart. This is the instrument with which the devil has captured everyone. Every sin, whatever addiction you have, I whatever sin, are under these three categories. Now, these are the the, this is the mother of category of it, call any sin. You will find them under these three categories. Mm. Now, sure. this is the this is how the devil tracks our life. And uh, you know, the moment any of this has a trace in our life, mm. any mm. be it idolatry, be it fornication, be it lying, lying, be it which falls under these three categories. Now, it makes you an effective. An ineffective soldier. Mm. Now, because he has something to hold on to. Mm. So, the Bible says, He said, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. But the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, mm. but they are mighty through God. So, our weapons are not physical weapons. Mm. He said, But they are mighty through God to pull down stronghold, casting down. Now, if you look at that scripture, it's not talking about the war we read in the world that's where we go physical. Mm. Casting down imagination. As a man thinketh in his heart, so, so is he. Now, so, the battle is in the mind. The battle is in the mind. Until we die to these three categories of sins, we die. Mm. We don't rise to take full possession of our capacity. Now, many have died to some. 
But there is still a trace of some there other. There is some old. So you will only go as far. But they, it is in the measure of their release to God. They have not died to certainty. Pride is still there somewhere. So as they, they rise. They don't tell lies. No for yes. they don't so, communicate. But then pride is somewhere. Now, as they rise. Now, the anointing they have has a measure of grace that comes with it. The anointing they have acquired, we draw on. So, their soldier, we have to be conscious of that. This is a soldier fighting. Because in the course of living his life, he's be, through him, God is help, delivering so many people. That is the battle we are fighting. Mm. Eh? He has been able to surrender his own soul to, a, to an extent. Unknown to him, there is still pride. There is still covetousness for money. He doesn't know. But because... He has little money now. So mm. he, he can surrender that to God. And as he grows, that measure of grace begins to attract wealth. Mm. You know, genuine wealth. And then money is coming. And then he begins to say, ah, church is growing. Ah, church is growing. How will I be giving tithe of one million? Mm. He begins to realize that there's a part of me that, ah, this money, one million as tithe, two million. Now, when the tithe was small, he mm. could let go. Mm. So these are, these are, Areas where devil will wait until you get to that measure where he can attack because he knows, he understands. You know, the Bible calls him the prince of the power of the head. He can manipulate the mind and he understands he can your pattern. The mind. He understands your weak point. He understands the Bible. You know, if Jesus was subject to the same criteria, despite the fact that he was the son of God, mm. he was not exempted. He was not asked to take a bow and go. Mm. But he has to first be proven that do you qualify to be a soldier to Kali actually rescue my people? Kato, so and the Bible tired. says the prince of this world came to check him and they found nothing. We need, to, we need to so be proved. We have to be proved. So it, mm. is, it is the measure to which we have surrendered that determines the extent of our victory. Mm. Now, mm. and that's also what determines the level of our capacity as a soldier. Mm. Now, we are growing every day. I'm not trying to condemn or trying to be say one is more righteous. We are all growing. We are hungry. Now, but I'm only saying that when, as a Christian, because you have read the scripture and you know what God can do, is it everything you read that you are able to do? Mm. Now, you say, ah, God can heal. You pray for somebody who is blind, you couldn't. It is because your level as a soldier mm. is lower. Mm. You have not surrendered all. Mm. When we surrender all, I mean all, the, all, the totality of God is we, embedded in us. Wow. You know, our, our growth is like downloading a software. The more we die to these things every day, the more Christ is increased in us. And the more he increase, the more our rank as a soldier increase. And then, more, you know, when you read that in your mind, if you look at Second Chronicles, different groups in numbers were assigned to different categories of soldiers. Yes, in now, their levels. That means those soldiers are not equal. They are not. So one they is commanding 10,000. Yes. Why are they not commanding the same amount? No. Because their levels are different. Their capacity. Their capacity as soldiers are different. Mm. So is this in Christ. Now, what defines what you can handle in the body of Christ or in your journey? And God is aware of this. Mm. So, you don't know the battle ahead. If you remain in the same level, not growing. You are not prepared. So, so we are, the, the battle we are fighting is a continuous one, no end, mm. until we see Christ. Mm. So, as you are building yourself, because just of like that, time. Nehemiah. Because there are still about two lot. questions I need. I know this, I, I know, I know myself that this topic is um, deep. One, yeah. But just to summarize it, you know, um, I would say we must fight. We must first be approved and enlisted mm. according to Second Timothy 2, 20 to 21. Mm. We must first be approved mm. and enlisted. Mm. You wow. know, and then we train and learn the weapons of war. Mm. We train and learn the weapons of war. We train and learn the weapon of war. What that describes is the things we, we, we know by saying, oh, you pray, you fast, you read the word in season and out of season, learning to divide the word, reading the word and let it sink into your heart, not your head. Not it's, it's part of how so, to win. And then 
make the Holy Ghost your best friend. Mm. Because you can have access to certain revelation, mm. but you will not have access to all revelation until you learn to walk with the Holy Ghost. It's wow. the revealer of truth. Wow. So these are the weapons. These are everything we need to win mm. is available. But you must understand how to use them. Mm. So so and and then we continually mm. grow. Because the battle is continuous. Mm. So we must keep you you don't say you have arrived. Bible says let it that you want this think battle. it has arrived. Take it lest it fall. Mm. Because the enemy is roaring like a lion. Mm. So when you have achieved certain height and say, Oh God, you have helped me now. Any mm. battle will no. come. Oh, before you no. say God reveals anything. No, no. no. it's not time to no. stop. It's mm. time to even start. Wow, wow. Because as wow. you rise, more <laughs> is committed to you mm. in the spirit realm. Wow. And so you have to keep, keep. It's a continuous pain. There's no, there's no resting time. Because of our time, yeah. even myself, I know, I know this topic. I, I, I thought we'll be able to manage just a session for this topic, but I don't think so. If, if I really want the youth out there to really get the mind of God, you've spoken a lot. You have spoken so deep. It takes people that are really spiritual to really pick some things. But I, I pray that as the youth out there are listening to us, both young and old, married, single, male and female. I pray that the Holy Ghost will give them understanding of all what you have said. You've spoken deeply because and there are practical things. You, sp you, you spoke practically because I'm a soldier in this end, a soldier of Christ myself. And uh, that is just how we are here. That's how God has helped us. And you have heard it. It's been wonderful how you can be expected, how you are expected to fight battle and win. You can win all battles of life. Is it that marriage is not working? You can get it right. Your career is not working. Their, your studies is not just going. How many times have you written jam? Your promotion exam is just failing and failing or whatsoever challenges you have in life. That and I can tell you more battles are coming ahead just as you have spoken. That is life. This life is a life of battle. Don't think because you want a particular battle, another one will not come. Don't miss this um, session. I'm having him next session by God's grace. Don't miss it so that you can get the full package of what God wants you to get. I can tell you, you will win all battle from this moment as you watch this, this undiluted word of God from the throne of your maker. And I pray the Lord will help you more in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. We've been blessed. I believe you have been blessed also, especially how we we are expected to fight battle and win as a soldier. But because of our time, we are we just have few one minute or two for today's session, and I, we have to cut it off to prepare for next session. I I pray that the Lord will help you by God's grace. This same message will continue next week as you view us. God bless you and bye for now. Mm -hmm.